We are doing sets and Venn diagrams today. So some words that you hopefully remember. If we are talking about the intersection of two sets of data, then we often use the word and, and you will likely see this symbol, which looks a bit like an upside, like, like an end, but without the stick. And that symbol means and, or the intersection of two groups. Union, or the word or, is a U. And complement means not something. And we're familiar with a little dash on the top of the letter. So the complement of A would be A with a little dash. Or you can use A with a line across the top of it. There is another one which is A with a little C for complement, but that doesn't tend to be as, as used as often, but it is mentioned down here further in your notes. Okay, so going through a few more terms that we're going to need to use. A set is a collection of or group of elements. Sample space, we've talked about this already, is a list of all possible outcomes. It is sometimes called the universal set which is why there's a few other suggested symbols here. So we're used to using S for sample space, but you may see the letter U because it is the universal set. And some other ones that hopefully won't show up very often are these two here, which are Greek letters. The first one is omega or omega, depending on how you pronounce it. And the other one is psi. Okay, just Greek letters, but they represent sample space. Uh, we haven't discussed this one yet in this topic, a subset. The notation for subset is shown here. This says A is a subset of B, so that's sideways U shape. It means that all the elements of A also belong to B. So it probably is good to look at the set of B here first, which is the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And I'm taking some numbers out of that, all the even numbers, for example, 2, 4, 6, and 8. So they are a subset. A is a subset of B. Okay, it says A is a subset of B because all the elements of A are also members of the set B. Equal sets is just what it sounds like. Two sets are equal if they have the exact same elements or members in both of them. So if A has 2, 4, 6, and 8, and B has 8, 4, 2, and 6, just changing the order around, they are the same elements, so they are equal sets. Complement, we talked about this. If A is the initial event, complement can be used with an A with a bar, A dash, or A with a little C, meaning a complement, and it means everything that is not in A. Element, an element is the things that are in our subset, so if our set, or our set, sorry, not subset, if our set is A equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 3 is an element of that set, and it can be written like this. 3 is an element of A. Now, that little symbol in there looks a lot like an E, so if you write it as an E, that is fine. It is actually, again, a Greek letter, which is called epsilon. Epsilon. Okay, so it is a bit more curvy than a normal E, but... It just makes sense to put an E because it means the element, right? Okay, so null or empty set is the circle with a line through it, meaning that there is no elements in that set. A cardinal number, we've used this before, but you may not have heard it called cardinal number before. It is when we're counting the number of elements that we want. So we usually say probability of the event, and we say P of... A or P or whatever the thing is we're trying to find. If I say N of A, it means I'm trying to find the number of things, not the probability. Um, so for example, if I have my set as one, two, three, four, five, six again, then the number of elements that are in A, there are six numbers in there, okay? Union or the word or. So if we use the notation A or B, means A union B, a or B, or they're all different ways of saying the exact same thing. It means all the elements that are in both A and B. For example, if set A is the numbers 1, 2, 3, 
and B is the numbers 2, 6 and 8, then A or B is going to be 1, 2, 3, 6 and 8. And you can see that here on a diagram. In, if you look at just the sets A and B, both of them have the number 2, which would be the combined part in the middle. That would leave numbers 1 and 3 over here and 6 and 8 over there in B. But together, 1, 2, 3, 6 and 8 are in all of those shaded section, which is the section that is described as A or B. However, if I take those same numbers and I now want to talk about the intersection of A and B, that means that it has to be both. If those numbers are in there again, it's the same numbers, A and B is just talking about the overlapping section, which is only the number two that is in both of those sets, the and. If it says only, A only, it means the elements that are only in A, so the two would not count, and it would just be the one and the three, so A only. And you can see that as a diagram, that means this part of the diagram, not the overlap, so just the A only, not the overlap, not the B, nothing outside the circles. Mutually exclusive events have nothing in common. That does mean that the A and B, the overlapping, the part that we consider the overlapping section, is the null set, meaning there's nothing there. There's nothing in the overlapping section. It means that for a complementary event, it works nicely. If I want the complement of A, I just need to do 1 minus the probability of A. This formula here, you probably remember from last year, the number of things in A or B, remember those things aren't just absolute value signs, we're talking about the number of things. The number of elements in A or B is the number in A plus the number in B minus the number in A and B, because otherwise you're counting that overlapping section twice. So we have to subtract one of them back off. However, if the two sets are disjoint, meaning that they have nothing in common, then A or B is just going to be the number of things in A plus the number of things in B because there is no overlapping section that is going to be at risk of being counted twice. All right? Whole bunch of theory, whole bunch of terms. Let's do an example. So example one, there is only one example. A survey of 80 people found that 36 people play football, 46 play cricket, also 14 people play both football and cricket, and 12 play neither. Construct a Venn diagram. So Venn diagram, start with a big rectangle, and you want to have two overlapping circles. Sometimes it's actually easier to draw them a bit more like ovals, so you have a bit more of an overlapping section. And the two things that we are comparing here are the people who play football, so that will be my first circle, with the people who play cricket. Okay, whenever you're trying to work out the numbers that go in this diagram, it's best if you can try and find the overlapping section first. So reading through that, there's 80 people, 36 people played football, but that's the whole football circle. 46 play cricket, that's the whole cricket. 14 people play both. Okay, that's the key one there that I need to start with. 14 goes in here. So that now means that I can go back and of the 36 people who played football, I need to subtract off the 14, because that's already been counted in my overlapping section. 36 take away 14 means that there's 22 people who only play football. Do the same thing for cricket. There are 46 people who play cricket. Subtract off the 14 means that there's 32 people who only play cricket. And we are told that there are 12 people who play neither you normally put that number in the bottom right hand corner. Now as a double check you should add up all of those numbers and make sure that they add to 80. We're told there was 80 people in the survey. So 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Does it work? Good. All right. So making sure our data works then we're ready to answer some questions. Part B. How many people? This is the cardinal number. We're not asked for probability here. How many people play football or cricket? Or, 
Okay, that's the in all of this, anything in those circles, the union of all of those parts. So that is going to be the 22 plus the 14 plus the 32, which is equal to 68 people who play football or cricket. Part two, how many people do not play cricket? Do not play cricket, there is actually two numbers. It would be the... We can't have anything in the cricket circle, but it would be the 22 and the 12. 22 plus 12 makes 34 people. How many people do not play football? So now we want to ignore anything in the football circle, which means we want 32 plus 12, which is 44. And how many people play only cricket, only means not overlapping, cricket only is the 32. Okay, that's it. So 12C is today.